Welcome back. This week, I'm continuing with the truck refurbishment, ready to carry our possessions on their journey up to the watermill. We expect to be sending our first truckload of tools, equipment, and things which are going into long-term storage this week. As mentioned last week, when I sanded the truck deck down, we have a number of stains from hydraulic fluid and diesel in the truck deck, several of which soak all the way through to the bottom of the decking. This presents a bit of a challenge for applying any sort of finish to the deck. I want to apply finish to the deck to protect our possessions from water or fluids in the stains from wicking up into the boxes or wooden furniture. I chose to use yacht varnish for the truck deck as it's very hard wearing and will cope well with the salt spray on the ferry, as well as damp wood. It's also really cheap, an epoxy finish would also be very hard wearing, but far more expensive. The truck isn't worth spending the extra money on when we have the water mill to focus on. Varnish would not apply directly to the stains however, as it just won't cure in contact with hydraulic fluid. Therefore I'm coating the deck with shellac first. I'm making the shellac sealer myself from flakes and isopropanol, then using an ultrasonic cleaner to take the mix time from 24 hours down to under an hour. Making shellac myself from flakes saves money, as long as you buy flakes without a fancy logo on the package. I'm specifically using D-Wax shellac to ensure my yacht varnish will adhere well to it. By making my own shellac, I know I have the freshest mix possible, as it does have a limited shelf life. It makes the most sense to just make my own, it's really not difficult or time consuming to do. Shellac is a great compatibility layer, it will adhere to almost anything. It's a resin excretion from the lac bug, it's waterproof and used in many industries. For our purposes though, it's an ideal stain blocker, odor block and primer. Shellac also cures purely from evaporation of the alcohol it's dissolved in, which means I can apply in temperatures which have been hovering around freezing. I want the truck deck to be grippy, even with wet shoes, so I'm leaving the 24 grit finish on the wood. I don't really care about the finish on the wood, I'm only concerned about what the finish can do for me, not how it will look. Initially I applied a coat of shellac on the worst stains while I continued sanding. Then once I was done I applied another full coat over the entire deck. This made it so stains got a double coat, even though a single coat would have been sufficient. It brushes on very easily, then soaks into the wood quickly. I end up using a bit over a litre of it, well, as much as a litre of alcohol dissolves anyway. I left the shellac coat to dry for a day, but with a couple of days of warm weather on the horizon, that's all I can afford to leave it for. It should be perfectly hard and dry after only 10 to 15 minutes, but it was pretty chilly on the day I applied it. I'm using a store brand yacht varnish that is really cheap. It turns out it's also really thick, especially at the temperatures we have outside. I applied the finish to one end of the truck using a brush, but it was so slow going I really needed a better way to do it. The really rough finish on the wood just added more friction to the brush and made it hard to get good coverage. This is all I had time for on the first day of good weather, it just took too long to apply. Of course, overnight the weather changed drastically. We woke up to a little snow on the ground and frost on everything. Not the 5 to 6 degrees we expected overnight, or the 13 to 14 degrees the next day. Evie of course loves the snow, so she was zooming around like crazy. I turned the heater back on in the truck in an attempt to get any heat I could into the box to try and get it to warm up enough to not ruin the varnish. 
After about a week, we got another warm day. So to make the most of it, I found an old squeegee we don't use because it's not very good and decided to spread the varnish on like I was cleaning a window, only in reverse, I guess. This works surprisingly well. I was able to get a really good coverage and not have to worry about pools of excess varnish or that I might have missed a spot. The good weather was meant to continue for a few days, but went from about 10 degrees in the morning down to freezing in the afternoon and snow, lots of snow. We got about 20 centimeters of very wet, heavy snow in half an hour. I guess using yacht varnish on the truck angers the gods. So the heater ended up back in the truck running for a couple of days. The truck box wasn't exactly warm, but it was hot enough to save the finish from going bad. I wanted to take the roller doors off and sand them down, then apply yacht varnish and finally repaint them in black so they would be more water resistant, especially against the salt spray on the ferry. But the weather hasn't allowed much to happen on that front. With time running out, I decided to just leave them be rather than tempt fate and end up with no doors on the truck when we needed to move. I'd really like to apply a second coat of yacht varnish to the deck as it did soak in a bit in some areas, so it doesn't have a consistent look to it. There just hasn't been any warm days at all since applying the first coat. And with just a few days left until I'm gonna be moving tons of equipment and items into the truck, I'm just out of time. It's better to have a functional yet less aesthetically pleasing finish than great coverage, which isn't hardened enough to handle the traffic on it. We have a limited window of time to move up to the island. We had hoped to do a load up to the watermill last week, but everything north of Inverness was covered in snow, including the watermill. We also had a hell of a time trying to get insurance for the truck because I'm the owner, but I can't drive it. In the end, we paid a big premium for the insurance, but at least we can get our stuff to the island. We also have to be out of this rental very soon, and one of the ferries to the islands from Scotland is going into dry dock. While this doesn't stop vehicles from getting to the island, it does remove our plan B from our logistics if the other ferry can't make the trip on the day we are there, for whatever reason. Anyway, next week will be the final truck restoration video as we tackle lighting, reverse cameras, running cables through the truck, then we will be getting back to the business of the watermill. We already have lots of the supplies and equipment and tools we'll need there or on their way to go up in the truck's first load. We're still waiting on listed building consent and planning permission. Once we have that, we'll be able to apply for the building warrant so we can start work. That being said, we still have plenty of tasks to do around the mill while waiting for that to come through.